the highest gross selling tour of 2023 and the second highest gross selling tour of the history of music, second only to Elton John's Feral Yellow Brick Road, concluded in July 2023 with over 300 shows and an income of $939.1 million. But it is projected to become the highest gross selling tour with 151 predicted shows across all five continents and the first 56 already played. Over 3.5 hours of show, 44 songs and 10 different acts depicting all albums. The biggest moment in pop history with the smallest marketing strategy, creating a big path behind her filled with people using the same. Ladies and gentlemen, Gays and Days, The Eras Tour. Hello, my beautiful kings and queens and welcome back to my channel so sorry excuse my hair but i just had a shower and i did not have the time to like fully dry my hair because then i have to run and have a lesson so that's what you're gonna get the era store is taylor swift sixth door and her biggest yet started in march 2023 it has already acquired the status of being one of the biggest tour of all time in the top 10 actually this tour also gave taylor swift the access to the billionaire club meaning that she is now a billionaire but not only this milestone was crossed for her she is also the only artist that has become billionaires with just music. A lot of musicians, singers, songwriters, and artists are actually billionaires. For example, Rihanna or Jay-Z, but also Kanye West, for example. But they became billionaire through a lot of different sources. For example, Rihanna with her makeup brand Fenty Beauty, whereas Taylor became a billionaire only through revenues related to music. And she is the first artist to be doing so, so congratulations. But not only, the store is actually expected to earn over $4 billion by the end of it. I said so crazy. And this is only because of a tiny marketing tactic so who knows me knows that i'm super interested in marketing this is actually an interest that i share with my dad but while he's more projected towards the small physical business model i am very interested also because i'm, a, I'm an artist myself in personal branding so this is so insane for me So the era store features pretty much all of Taylor's eras. And what we mean when we talk about eras in the case of Taylor Swift is that basically every era is representative of an album. So eras are defined by the different albums that came out in those periods of time. For each album, there is a different aesthetic, a different vibe and a different style, different sounds and genres. Taylor, of course, is not the only one who uses this method to categorize her albums. Actually, pretty much every artist does that. And that's because if you publish an album as an artist, the reason why you put those songs specifically in that album is because on a whole, you want to communicate a certain thing. You want the album to have a certain thread that connects all the song together. So if there is a thread that connects all the songs together and sends a cohesive message, of course, you have to have cohesive aesthetic, cohesive style, etc. A person who does this really well is Ariana Grande because every era we have different aesthetics, different styles and different genres because every album explores different genres, different style and different sounds, but also different hair, which of course is part of the aesthetic, but not many people do that. So comprehensively is Ariana Grande doing so because her hair have always been really iconic. Every album of course has to be different because it represents the artist persona changing. But I feel like Taylor is now basically the only one who is managing to really, really monetize off of this particular thing. And what I mean by that is the era's era. You have surely seen people online talking about this specific moment in time as the era's era. They are referring to this specific moment in time when it comes to uh, content creation, trends, and so on. And this is because, guys, a lot of creators are using this specific marketing strategy 
that Taylor Swift also put in her tour in order to promote their products or specifically bring more attention to their persona, especially if they are old creators and they've been around for a while. And that's because in order to actually put the strategy into place, you have to have a lot in your luggage when it comes to career. The Era Store is so, so incredibly successful because it leveraged a specific thing and it's nostalgia. And we're gonna talk about that in depth later. But first, let me tell you guys about a few examples of people who started picking up on this marketing strategy and they've been really intelligent to implement that in their specific content. The first one is James Charles. Now, I was actually scrolling on social media and I saw his video and that's where I got the idea for doing this video because I'm seeing that nobody's really talking about it. For the ad of this new basic canvas palette, which is pinned at the top of his profile and now sitting at 8.5 million views, he dresses up as his different eras. The older palette from his brand Painted also talks it's a character and there are interactions with a lot of different James Charles. For example, we see the Hiya Sister meme version of James Charles, which became viral, I think around 2016, because it was almost a jump scare. Hi, sisters. And actually in the video, we can see the Hiya Sister James Charles coming out and the real, technically, James Charles getting sorrow by it. We also have behind the camera, the big eyebrows, James Charles. If you're not familiar with James Charles, Part of why he became so famous in the realm of beauty content creating is because of his very bushy eyebrows. And even though right now, unfortunately, because I have bigger eyebrows, small eyebrows are coming back, like the 90s eyebrows are coming back, James started the trend of having really big eyebrows with the concealer, you know, guys, like we're talking about the concealer eyebrows, the ones that have concealer right here, that were very trendy in 2016, but they are still a staple in, for example, the Latina makeup that it's so good. You guys, I love it so much. But of course, he faced a lot of backlash in the whole career for his bushy eyebrows, and so he puts it in the video. We also have the woo 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 version of James Charles from this specific video. <laughs> This video is all over TikTok. Like, I swear, every week I see somebody reposting this video. Guys, insane. Bring me a little water now. Bring me a little water, Sylvie. Now, I have seen this video multiple times, but I haven't really found the source of it. Guys, excuse me, I'm coming from the future. So I actually found more information about this video and they were actually posted a while ago. I don't remember actually how much time ago, I don't remember when it was posted by uh, actual James Charles, basically explaining that that was a meet and greet in San Francisco and he only had like 100,000 followers. I mean, only. <laughs> But essentially what he said is that it was in San Francisco and there were just 50 people in this at this meet and greet. The thing is that everybody is super cringed because of this. And so for this reason, it of course became a meme. And this is another video that I see every now and then from different angles. <laughs> it's so insane. The thing is that this video became super viral because people enjoyed it. People felt part of it, even if this was an ad for a super basic palette. I mean, the name is basic Canva palette. Canvas, I'm sorry. And I mean, it makes sense though, because it's in line with the trends right now and everybody is all about nude makeup. But at the same time, the way in which he managed to convey all of his personas, specifically all of his memes in one video. So people felt like they were viewing a 
fever dream of a few years back. Especially now, after COVID, we are kind of all like dreaming about the past time, 2016, 2017, 2018, when makeup itself was a lot freer, like there was so much scale and such. But the impression that I get from the makeup world at the moment is that now we are getting a little bit too obsessed with perfections. There are a lot of things that now are cringing us of the past, but at the same time, we're looking at the past, like kind of wanting to go back there. So I feel like part of why it works so well in this specific case is that people who are passionate about makeup are kind of wanting to go back to those times. Another jumping on the train of the era's era is actually Pete Davidson. And I know that you've seen it all over TikTok. This SNL skit aired on October 14th, 2023 is definitely something that everybody has at least heard of, if not saw. It became a huge hit. And now people are reposting and are keeping reposting it and making lots of memes off of it. And that's because it's very memeable. In the Saturday Night Live skit, P basically makes a parody of I'm Just Ken, the song from the Barbie movie sang by Ryan Gosling, who interprets Ken. And he talks about himself and all the pop culture moments that have characterized his persona. Over the course of his career, in fact, most people know Pete Davidson, not so much because of his comedic abilities that, in my opinion, they're pretty good. Like, I feel like he's a very good comedian. Like, I laugh, okay? But because there is something about it that attracts very, very high level women. If you live under a rock, Pete Davidson first became super popular because of his engagement to Ariana Grande in 2018. And even more so because since this engagement was broken and Ariana Grande ended up marrying Dalton Gomez in 2021. But now, yeah, she's divorced. But another thing in Pete Davidson's career, even more significant, was that he managed to pull Kim Kardashian after her divorce with Kanye West. Okay, so the video starts with P basically making fun of this specific thing, of the fact that his career as a comedian is definitely less known. In fact, he has produced and acted in this comedy series called Bob Keys, which did not have great success. Like, not so many people actually knew it. And even though he had two very important personality, Joe Pesci and Andy Falco, he did not have any viewers. So even though it was very well received from the critics, like people liked it, not so many people actually watched it. But probably the most distinctive thing about this specific skit is the beef with Ye. And that's because after Kanye and Kim's divorce, Kim got together with Pete. And so he said, people online still call me Skeet because of a guy whose name I can't say legally. And the picture of Ye comes briefly on the screen. So if you're not familiar with this, Pete and Ye had a, a really big beef when it comes to Kim Kardashian, because Kanye really, really, really had an issue with this. Oftentimes Kanye had posted not so gentle tweets about Pete Davidson and many things came up, but I don't want to sit here and stay talking about this for the whole video because the point of the video is another one. Another thing that he really jokes on is, again, his dating life because he says that it's more relevant and makes more scene than his actual career as a comedian. He is in fact actually connected not only with Kim Kardashian and Ariana Grande, but also with Kylie Gerber and M. Rada as well. And now he's currently dating Madeline Klein. In fact, he says, my dating life is not discreet. I generate tons of publicity for everything except for my comedy. He also talked about his drug addiction and the fact that he had been to the rehab multiple times. And we're not going further away from Pete in the next chapter because we're going to talk about Ariana, Miss Grande. Ariana, not so long ago, because of her 10th anniversary of the first album that she has ever published, 
yours truly, decided to celebrate the decade of beautiful and really full career and the decade of age of the album by posting lots of content about it. And actually, part of this content is a re-recording of the album Yours Truly with a deluxe version and a few performances live from London with the orchestra that are actually available on YouTube. And I was actually planning on closing it here and going to the next chapter. But while I was doing my researches and I searched on YouTube for the video of the skit from Pete Davidson, the ad that came on YouTube was the ad of the new tour by Melanie Martinez. Melanie Martinez has announced a tour. When I guess the name, exactly. The Trilogy Tour. The singer just announced her tour for now only in the US, starting from May 10th, 2024 in Seattle and finishing on June 14th, 2024 in Detroit. She's going to sing her songs, a lot of her songs, from all her different eras. Now, there is a clear connection between Taylor and her, who saw this idea as an opportunity to leverage her career. And honestly, I cannot be happier for her. Now, but what is this very simple marketing strategy that we're talking about? Oh my, the accent. So it has a very easy name, nostalgia marketing. Now, nostalgia marketing works and it works very well, especially, well, actually not, not, not even, especially if you have a long, long career in the public eye, but not even only, okay? Because nostalgia marketing is not just about recalling your specific career moments, like your career highlights, but also tapping into specific highlights that people are very familiar with and bringing them into your world. Basically, nostalgia marketing, according to adroll.com, is the strategy of tapping into positive, familiar concepts from previous decades to build trust for new ideas and reinvigorate modern campaigns. In other words, it's a tactic of associating your company with something a customer already love and have fond memories of. This is actually a very, very old idea. And it's actually, I can tell you because I'm a tutor, used a lot in the educational space. Sometimes students are not super receptive and not because they're dumb, okay? I'm not saying that, okay? I'm not insulting anybody. But often we're not really able as teacher, we're not really able to communicate our passion for the actual topic. And I mean, I have a passion for English grammar, but I can't understand why a normal 15 year old does not have the same passion that I have. It makes absolute sense. But if you manage to tap into specific memories of that specific student, you can actually bring them to enjoy the process of learning. And and you can actually help them learning and really setting the new concept into their mind. It's a lot easier to add information to something that you already know or to add information, bring it in when there is a connection with something that you already know rather than putting yourself in a new situation where you have no idea what you're doing. And of course, specifically now, more than ever, is the time to use nostalgic marketing. Why is that? Because people are nostalgic. People are nostalgic of the world pre-pandemic. Now, personally, the pandemic has changed my life completely. My life looks nothing the way it looked before the pandemic. The pandemic for me, in my case, brought me really, really positive things such as the love of my life. Without the pandemic, I would not have been able to meet them. Actually, if you actually want a video about that, I would like to do that, but I have to know if you're interested in. And that's why we find so much comfort into old TV shows, old songs, old albums, even old ads. Nostalgia actually, according to some researches, can be very effective against boredom and anxiety. It's a positive coping strategy that allows you to tap into your most favorable moments in your life, to tap into nicer memories. Taylor Swift is doing exactly this because she's using her career to create a whole tour, of making her a 
ton of money and simply because she is tapping into their listeners' memories. So Taylor Swift actually is where she is because she is really good with this. She knows what her fans want. She knows her fans, we can say. She knows what they want and she gives it to them. And honestly, this is so important as an artist. You guys have to know your listener. And I speak it for myself. I call myself out because I don't know my listener. I don't have so many listeners. But if you know your listeners, if you know what they want, you don't even have to be that creative. If you are a Taylor Swift fan yourself, or even more if you're not, you know that, and Swifties, Taylor Swift fans, have specific characteristics in common. And for them, this marketing tactic is great. It helps them tapping into their specific memories connected to Taylor, which for a fan is so incredible. So my favorite artist is um, Eminem. And if Eminem did something like this, if Eminem did an Eras tour, the Truly, guys, the ticket could even be $10,000, but wo- I would have, excuse me, truly, guys, I do not care. I would find a way to pay it. Because imagine your favorite, well, if you are a Swifty, you don't have to imagine, but imagine for a moment your favorite singer or your favorite artist of all time feeding you such meal like 10 courses meal baby we're talking about that so yeah here it is the video i finished with my video so today i tried a new type of content let's see if you guys enjoy it if you do not know who i am i'm alex Oshin and I'm a content creator and rapper. You can find my songs in the description box down below. It's in the link tree and you can find the link to all my social media. If you want to help me, if you find my content cool and good, you can help me by subscribing to the channel. I post one to two videos every week, depending on, or leaving a thumbs up. That is like 100% free and it costs you literally one second, probably even less, but it makes a big difference for me. So yeah, now I'm gonna go editing and I love you guys so much. Please comment down below if you like the video and you guys have a great day. See you in the next video.